Hello everybody, welcome to Bash Course Quarantined U.S. History Edition. My name is Tom Ritchie and today we're going to talk about the Reconstruction Period. Alright, so we all know about the Civil War, assuming you watched our last video. Uh, but now let's talk about the aftermath. So Abraham Lincoln is still president, and basically he built his policies uh, for Reconstruction around the idea that the Confederacy never left the Union, rather they were just a minority who were in a state of rebellion, but still part of the Union. So he had his proclamation of amnesty and Reconstruction of 1963, and it basically set up a process of reintegration for the South by requiring uh, oaths of allegiance back to the United States and also requiring uh, re rewriting of state constitutions. Um, and also, those constitutions had to accept uh, the freedom of slaves, so no more slavery. And so a state government could be uh, reestablished as part of the Union officially if 10% of the voters took the oath, and uh, although Republicans sort of didn't like this 10% and passed what was known as the Wade Davis Bill, requiring 50% of voters to swear that allegiance, uh, Lincoln vetoed, and that remained pretty much the same for a few years during Lincoln's presidency and eventually Johnson's. So in the 1865, Congress created the Freedmen's Bureau. It was basically uh, an early form of welfare. It provided provisions such as uh, free education and also land to many freed slaves and also poor uh, whites. Uh, as you can see here, this is a, a document you may or may not see. This was on a previous AP test uh, about the Freedmen's Bureau protecting poor African Americans. So the, the agency was relatively successful in educating many African Americans, hundreds of thousands of them, actually. Uh, however, Andrew Johnson, who would soon be president, uh, would pardon many Confederate landowners, which reduced the ability of the Freedman's Bureau to uh, give land to those freed African Americans. So uh, one day, Lincoln w decided to go for a trip to the theater, and here we have uh, John Wilkes Booth and, you know, the story, the Ford's Theater, he shot and killed him. And now you have Andrew Johnson, who is the president of the U.S. He was the only Southern Democrat senator to actually support the Union, and that's why uh, Lincoln chose him in the election of 1860 as a sort of, like, bipartisan, you know, pro-America stance. Um, Johnson kept on... Uh, most of Lincoln's policies early on, as well as he uh, disenfranchising, so taking away the right to vote of many Confederate leaders and certain rich Southerners. As you know, there's a sort of Southern aristocracy in Congress from their rich plantations. Uh, however, Johnson had the power to pardon people, and he did use this to pardon many con former Confederate leaders who were able to eventually retake offices in politics in their states. So by the end of 1865, about all 11, all 11 states had re-qualified to reintegrate into the Union officially. And these constitutions may have had the 13th Amendment, but they didn't necessarily guarantee the right to vote for many African Americans. And instead, there was what was known as Black Codes. It's basically like the form of like Jim Crow laws. It was meant to encumber African Americans and their pursuit for uh, economic uh, opportunity and, and uh, political opportunities such as voting. Um, the U.S. government did authorize a U.S. military presence in the South to ensure these regulations would be respected in Congressional Reconstruction, so we do have that to uh, look forward to as we go on here through Reconstruction. And we also see that there's going to be a rise in what's known as sharecropping, uh, which was really not that different from slavery. It was a practice in the South where uh, landowners would offer land and supplies for rent, and the owners would take some of the profit from the uh, harvest. However, that rent was pretty much insurmountable 
the person, usually an African American, always be in debt for the rest of their life. So it was pretty much slavery too. Um, so many ex-slaves, yeah, saw this as a way to escape poverty, but were still relegated to a sort of underclass in poverty. And uh, moving on to Johnson. Johnson was no friend to Republicans in Congress. He vetoed many bills, such as increasing uh, the ability of the Freedman's Bureau to give more supplies, and also a civil rights bill that would have nullified many of the black codes uh, through legal means in the South. Um, and this was all in early 1866, and eventually these vetoes marked the end of what's known as presidential reconstruction under Lincoln and Johnson, and now throughout 1866 into eight, until 1877 we have what's known as congressional reconstruction, which is a lot more um, radical at the time for its agenda. So basically in Congress the Republicans were really the main people the party that was wanting to give freedom for African Americans. And even in the Republican Party, though, there are two factions. There's the moderates, who are generally known as pre-Civil War free soilers. So they're ones who um, were mainly concentrated on uh, the white middle class, on helping them with economic reasons, not so much in uh, civil rights causes and ending slavery. But then there are the more radical Republicans. That's what they're known as. These are the people who champion civil rights, voting rights, uh, the abolition of slavery, stuff like that. And um, as time went on, though, more Republicans became radical as African Americans were now counted as one whole person, no more three-fifths. And so in the South, that meant that Republicans would most likely gain uh, votes from African Americans, but still uh, Southerners through their black codes were discriminating or intimidating these voters. So many Republicans thought that not only is this the moral thing to do, but it's also the politically uh, expedient thing to do to give them the right to vote. Um, so more Republicans such as Charles Sumner in the Senate, who was famous for being caned by Preston Brooks, if you know that, and uh, Thaddeus Stevens who, uh, in the House, a representative, these are mainly the two big radical Republicans, you have to know, who wanted to uh, help with civil rights. And so the Civil Rights Act of 1866 overrode many of Johnson's vetoes and declared all African Americans to be citizens of the U.S. And it did attempt to block the black codes and in some cases was successful. Um, and in fearing its like repeal, if Democrats ever got into Congress again, the, it was adopted as constitutional amendments that passed uh, pretty well. The 14th Amendment created what's known as birthright citizenship. So if you're born in the U.S., you're automatically a citizen. And in, also in 1866, a joint committee of Congress rejected presidential reconstruction and asserted that it should be Congress's right to put restrictions on Confederate reintegration and also civil rights, among other things. And in this year, this was a uh, midterm year, the elections were very divisive as Johnson, you know, a Democrat, he campaigned in, in what was known as the swing around the circle, basically playing on racial prejudices to get Democrats back in Congress, while Republicans employed what's known as waving the bloody shirt, basically using anti-South prejudice and basically using patriotic fervor saying, you know, we won the war and what did we win the, what did we fight the war for? Uh, freedom from slavery, civil rights, and also keeping the union as it is. Um, the Republicans did win overwhelming majorities in both ha the House and the Senate, and the solid Republican supermajority passed what's known as the Reconstruction Acts of 1867, which placed the South under pretty heavy uh, military occupation and increased the criteria for gaining readmission to the union. Uh, the Congress that year also passed what's known as the Tenure of Office Act, which prohibited the president from removing a federal official or military officer without congressional approval. Now, Johnson thought it was unconstitutional and it would later be ruled by uh, a court case to be unconstitutional, but at this time it's, it was the law of the land, and Johnson basically, out of spite, removed the uh, 
commanding military officer was like, what are you going to do? Impeach me? And uh, that's exactly what happened. Uh, it was the first impeachment in the history of the U.S., and it fell by one vote short from actually convicting Johnson in the Senate. And so, you know, I, I, I wonder, you know, will we have any more impeachment hearings? You know, that one is pretty, pretty uh, divisive and pretty important to American history. All right, so the election of 1868 resulted in a uh, GOP victory, Republican victory in the presidential election. Ulysses S. Grant, a former Civil War general, a hero, continued the radical Republican agenda, and he supported the 15th Amendment, which established universal male suffrage, so any and all males in the U.S. who are citizens could vote, not women yet. Uh, and made, yeah, racial discrimination illegal, and it was actually being enforced pretty well because you had the Union Army in the South. Um, this resulted in quite a few African Americans actually being elected to the House and Senate for the time, 16 in the House and one, at least one in the Senate at this time. And so, you know, there was incremental progress, as you can see here. However, in the South, there were people who resisted. You have the formation of the KKK, basically a vigilante group, a white uh, nationalist ethno-state group wanting to end civil rights for African Americans. And then you have the Civil Rights Act of 1875, which is a, another major legislation calling for equality in public accommodations, transportation, and juries, so basically like ending segregation. Um, and this, however, would later be ruled to be unconstitutional in what's known as the Civil Rights Cases of 1883. Uh, and here we see, you know, in the mid-1870s, uh, Reconstruction is starting to wane. The number of troops in the South are starting to uh, be withdrawn and fall and fall. And uh, there was a recession in 1873, so people were focused more so on the economy rather than uh, civil rights. And so we have the election of 1876, which put Republican Rutherford B. Hayes against Democrat Samuel Tilden. Tilden is a Northern Democrat. And uh, Tilden did win the popular vote. However, the Electoral College was still disputed and a commission was created in the House to sort of administer the electoral college's uh, votes left and the republicans on the commission awarded hayes all the votes but of course democrats would be furious as partisan fights are uh, and so to ease the transition for hayes uh, the republicans and democrats agreed to what was known as the compromise of 1877 which allowed hayes to be president if federal troops would be removed from the south and now basically effectively end Reconstruction as even though the laws were there to protect African Americans, there was not much oversight and enforcement. And so when federal troops were pulled out, that's exactly what happened. Uh, Southern Redeemers, as they're known as, were re-elected to uh, positions in Congress from Southern states. You have the end of like Republican domination of Southern states as you have the sort of white supremacists coming to come Congress again. And African Americans also, they've lost so many of their uh, gained privileges and rights in the past decade in the South, and they're relegated to a political and economic underclass. So that past decade of advancement was gone, and there will not be that much advancement for the next century until the 1960s. So that is it for Reconstruction. It's Young Tom Ritchie signing off.